This is the Wicked Weird Podcast. I'm Josh, and tonight we're going deep on Bigfoot. My guest is Ryan Golombeski, or known in the Bigfoot community as RPG. He's here to break down his multiple Bigfoot encounters and to share some controversial theories that are floating around the Bigfoot community. Let's go deep. RPG, thank you for uh, coming on the podcast. Yeah, but dabba do though. Let's jump right in. Tell us about some of your squatchy encounters working on finding Bigfoot. My first major experience happened in Turner, Maine. Go on YouTube, look up Turner, Maine Bigfoot, and you can see it. There's actually two videos, and it shows this Sasquatch walking around midday. Wait, it was a high school kid, right? It was a high school kid? Yeah, yeah. And so Found the it? show, yep, so the show decided to show up and stand in solidarity with this kid. And, and you know, I'd like to note that sometimes reality TV does good, because this kid was getting picked on, and he was humiliated. And this is a shy, good kid. But country boy, we live in the middle of nowhere. When after we showed up, things got better, you know, because he got a little bit of fame under his belt, and that just changes everything. Anyway, so we go there, and uh, our camping team got action: wood knocks, howls, uh, you know, the, the usual stuff we get on the show when, when we hit the right spot. And then our team that went out at night also got action. Same thing. So there's definitely everybody was like, okay, if th- there's either somebody messing with us mm-hmm. or there's someone here. But let's set right. the stage for this evening, okay? I spend all of my time in the woods walking through darkness. I do not fear that. However, on this night, it was late spring, the the clouds had dropped from the sky and were on the earth. So not only were you dealing with canopy cover, absolute darkness, you were dealing with heavy moisture. Visibility was no more than three inches in front of your face. Mm -hmm. It was so dark, I was afraid that I was going to walk into a branch and stab my eye. So when, when the night teams come back... I went into the woods. My theory was if there was something out there, we were like a giant fishing lure, a sneezing, farting, (laughs) ridiculous lure, and they would draw the squatch back. So I go out in the woods. Now, I'm not going to tell the whole crazy story. Maybe we'll say that for another time. Let's just, we'll get to the fine points. One of the things that I do, and don't tell anyone I work with that I did this, but I think it works. Uh, I took (laughs) off, I took off my walkie. I raised it up to show the woods that I wasn't here to record you or do anything for glory. I just want a real experience. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I've been doing this a bunch, so I believe, but I don't believe. That's the only way you yeah. can describe it in these moments. Mm-hmm. So I hold my thing up, put it down. I even take my cell phone out. I show it to the woods and I go and I put it behind me and I come back and I have two apples. Every indigenous peoples that we meet would tell us, you need to leave offerings. You need to communicate with them before you get there, telling them you're coming, letting them know if you would like to, an experience with us, we would love it. But if not, then you should move out because we don't want to ruin your day. Mm-hmm. It's just... It's like calling ahead of time to say you're stopping by, you know? It's just smart, right? So, um, oh, God, where am I? Oh, Turner, Maine. So so I take one apple, and I turn to my left, and I chuck it. And it literally hits a tree two feet away from me, and I feel like an idiot. Like, literally, I'm like, God dang it. And I kind of stomp for a second, and I'm like, I'm like, stay focused, Ryan. So I turn, and the logging road that I was on, I was like 30 yards in the woods beyond a stone wall, and then another 30, 40 yards, whatever. I chucked this apple, and what I didn't know is the trail became water, like became like a little river, like maybe Mm -hmm. two feet deep, like nothing deep at all. The apple goes, lands in the water. Now, part of my ritual when when I go to communicate is I get down on one knee and I put my palm out. I do a submissive posture. I also dance around. I think uh, the squatches, we'll get into this more, but I think they speak through physicality. They are the, they are the premier um, alpha um, on earth. Like th- there is nothing that has ever been more well-rounded and more suited to dominate all environments than the squatch. Yeah. And so when you are the, the apex of apex predators. The alpha of alphas. Like, like a, fu- a, 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 a squatch, and I would even argue a, a female, like a smaller than a male, but a full-grown squatch, in my opinion, they could have taken on a T-Rex. They could have taken down a bronze T-Rex? Rex. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> They're, they're, imagine, a, some say they even tend to a 13 feet tall. Yeah. We're talking a thousand to like maybe more, maybe right. up to 2000. Dude, that is, they're, that is so powerful. It yeah. like a T, it would punch the T-Rex knee and just blow it out. I'm just <laughs> telling you. Well, anyway, I, I thoroughly believe in the scratch. So I throw that apple. It lands in the water. I get down on my knee, put my palm out. Like you might've seen in movies where then the, uh, if the, if the dominant yeah. male, uh, runs their hands across your hand, then you're forgiven for whatever bullshit you did. No lie. At roughly 2.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. in the middle of fucking nowhere, Maine, on a random ass night, on the darkest night I've mm-hmm. ever been in the woods in my entire life, mm-hmm. roughly 10 seconds or less after that apple hit the water, something walks out of the woods, kaploosh, kaploosh in the water, kabloop, 
picks up the apple, kabloosh, kabloosh, silence. Now, in that moment, I regressed back to being that little kid in the car, amazed at what I was witnessing. And I immediately went from being super cool, like, eh, nothing's going to happen, to shaking violently. Like, <laughs> and I was literally telling myself, I was like, you got to get control. You're not ready to meet them yet. You know, like, I was all, I was pissed at myself because... Did you smell anything? No, no. This is, I smelt nothing. I saw nothing. But like I said, there is either a very large, wealthy man with uh, military or women, military grade night scope goggles on fucking with us in the middle of nowhere and turn them in at 2.30 in the morning on the darkest day of the year or there's something in the woods. Right. But you're convinced it was bipedal, right? Because the way it walked? Yeah, yeah. It was it a wasn't splash. just like two rocks that fell in the water quick? No, no. Because it was splash, splash. And when you pick up something from the water, it's a different too. sound. Kabloom. I mean, like, oh, can almost mimic it. Like, kabloom. And then you hear it walk back out? Kabloosh, kabloosh, silence. Now, wait, wait. Before you even heard this, it yeah. a lot of times people report when there's like a Sasquatch around that everything in the forest gets quiet. Did that happen at all or anything? No, no, no. We, lines? you have to understand, we move, we try to move with a, and create as small a footprint as possible while being in the woods, but you still have, you know, with, with both groups coming back at the same time, I mean, you have just under 10 people. So that's, that's a lot of people. You make a lot of noise. Everything gets quiet when you come stomping through. And they had just passed through when we're setting up to do So it was quiet. It was quiet, but that's, I just, that's not what I noticed, you know, like, yeah. It's not what I noticed, but, but everybody got action. That was one of the few places we've been where everybody in the team was like, yeah, there's something going on out here. I don't know what it is. You know, the non-believers are like, yeah, it's probably animals, but it's very active. And then the squatchers are like, oh my God, like this is the source. Yeah. yeah. So after that, I walked back to camp and I don't know what to do with myself. I'm like a lost little, I'm I'm a lost little puppy, but I'm so excited to know that, that I'm even closer to really knowing they're real. Um, and I walk up to uh, Bobo, and he's in line getting some uh, chili, because at the end of the night, we prepare food, so everyone comes back, eat a little something, get in the car, and they rumble, grumble, they fall asleep. Yeah. Everybody's good. I mean, you know, it's like taking care of babies. But they're talented. Wait, and- I'm thinking in the beginning, you, said, you didn't set it up, so and the, this all took place while you were working on the show, Finding Bigfoot. You were there. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we were there to, well, I thought I kind of did with the, with the boy saying we showed up in solidarity, but maybe I didn't say Finding Bigfoot. I work on a show called Finding Bigfoot. We find Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, besides being a dick. Uh, so, so I get in line and I'm just walking alongside of him and I just kind of look at him and very sweetly I just go, they're real. And he looks at me and he, you know, it's the end of the night. He's been trekking through the woods. He's irritable. He's like, yeah, I know. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> and he just keeps lumbering on in line, almost like ready to shove people out of the way. The bones. <laughs> and, uh, and I just keep walking alongside him like big spike and little spike. And I, and I just, I'm so happy. I'm like, so ha- it's, it's, it's Christmas morning. The first time you learn to love it. And I look up at him and I go, no, they're real. And he Looks at me again, kind of gives me a double take, and then keeps walking. And then all of a sudden, I just remember his whole body changed. He looked at me and he goes, what did you see? What happened? And then, you know, then obviously we tried to go in the woods, everything. We heard him walking all around, right around camp. But we no, we did not get any footage. No, we didn't anything. But it turned out to be like a ridiculously exciting night. Um, and that was like my first... That's where so I became a believer. You were all in at that point. You were, you were all in on Bigfoot. I was like, yeah, this is, this is real. This is something really real. And then, um, so I'll just share my top three, yeah, but, but these things, I've, I've had experiences all over the entire country. So that's uh, Northeast, you know, but let's go Northwest. So we're in Washington State off uh, Chicken Coop Road. and um, Chicken Coop Road. Chicken Coop Road. And I'm cruising out with my, uh, my buddy Mike, we call him TB on the show, Talking Baby, because he, he looks like a little talking baby. Although I never call him it. This is like the first time I ever even say what it is. But I don't call him it because I don't think that shit's cool. <laughs> That's Mike. Mike's the future of Hollywood. Like, we're all dead if we piss Mike off. So, uh... Well, I'm glad you said it straight. Yeah. Well, you know, and I get to call him Talking Baby, so it kind of works both ways. And, um, so we're driving out to meet Bobo. Now, this is a typical fucking Bobo adventure. For everyone that knows Bobo, this is what it is. Great intentions, half-assed directions. Okay. So he gives us directions to a mountain off Chicken Coop Road in the middle of nowhere. We drive about an hour and 20 minutes from the hotel. And we're going up this dirt road. And, of course, it's all just dirt roads into properties where people are going to build. And some people have built. But it's a fucking mountain. So we are lost. And there's no reception. So we mm-hmm. can't get a hold of the bobs. Oh. So now we're pissed. And we're like, dude, we drove this far. And we knew. We were like, this is going to turn into a bobo adventure. It's going to turn into a bobo adventure. 
Anyway, so we can't find them. So we decide, fuck it. We're just gonna we're just gonna roast a toasty and then we're gonna drive home. So we get to almost the top of the mountain and we just pull in this one little dirt road that you, it was like canopy covered uh -huh. and we couldn't quite tell where it ended, but we were like, ah, it looks private enough. We don't yeah. want to get caught doing this. So we pull in there and when I tell you this, I mean it. it we're up on a mountain and somebody had clear cut the woods enough where you could see all the way down to the inlet and the water and the ships moving and the islands. Honestly, this is a place where you take someone and you propose to them. It was mm -hmm. so beautiful. We literally sat there for a second, didn't say anything. We were like, we are, this is why we drove out here. Fuck Bobo. Like, we came to see the spot. So we get to the spot. Now remember, the whole time we're on our way, the one thing, and, and I appraise Mike if you're listening for this, because he listens. And we, as we're heading there, we're saying, we're coming. We're coming. We would love to have some kind of experience. And we're trying to think that the whole time. Like, even though we're talking, in, in silence, you're thinking that. And we get there. We pull in. We roast the toasty. We get out. And he immediately walks up to the center of the view and just starts pissing. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're ruining the view. He's like, fuck you. Bigfoot isn't real. And, uh, and so I turn and start walking down. And I do a couple of whoop. You know, I just, I, I whoop a couple times and it's late afternoon. So you fall in love when you stop looking for it or you just not really thinking about it. I made the whoops because it's just habit now. Okay. I do it wherever I go hoping, you know, you're all, it's just, it's a, it's the game of a thousand shots hoping cool. to score. And so I'm walking along and now, okay. When I, I have seen elk that look like dinosaurs. I've seen moose bigger than dinosaurs. <laughs> I've seen bear, I've seen everything mm -hmm. on our adventures, but nothing has ever given me primal fear except for this moment. And by primal fear, I mean, okay, so I'm walking along and now this time I am aware of the sound because I'm more in tune now with nature and I'm more aware that you can mm -hmm. listen for things like that. And here's what's interesting. Right before this happened, all the birds got a little bit louder, just a little, but so faint that if I wasn't listening to them, yeah. I would never have noticed. That's Nature speaks in subtleties. We're all about rah, rah, rah. Right. That you can't communicate with nature if you come, come in that direction. So that it got a little louder, and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then something started to stand up 30 feet away from me in the bushes. Now, these bushes were so thick, you couldn't see more than five or six feet in. I mean, just just trees and shrubs and briars. and I mean, it was, it was gnarly. Like, nothing's in there. But something was. And it starts to stand. What freaked me out was that as it got up, I was like, oh, that's really big. But I was like, oh, maybe it's a moose. Maybe it's an elk. Maybe, right. But then I'm looking in there, bear. I'm like, or bear. But I'm like, the bushes, it's so thick, like anything with antlers would never even get in there. It's yeah. like ridiculous. But maybe, who knows, right? But it just keeps standing up. It takes so long to stand up that I find myself squatting and thinking, like literally prepared, like butthole quivering. I'm going <laughs> to shit myself. And sprint as fast as possible in that direction. And it's the only time in my life where I knew in that moment, if I sprinted, I would have been the fastest person on earth. I guarantee if someone clocked it, I would have hit 40 miles an hour. Was kicked in. I would have adrenaline run. First time in my life. We've got to figure out how to do that, man. We'd win some sick races. But, uh, but, and then finally, after what seemed like 10 seconds of standing, it was up. And I could, you could see the bushes and you could see the bushes just swaying. Yeah. That's it. But barely, because it was far enough in to where it must have been on the side. But it moved. It moved. And the next part is what I will never forget in my life. And the only way I can describe it to you is uh, if you've ever seen Jurassic Park, when the T-Rex steps and it sends a tremor. and it's boom, boom. This sound of it walking away was the loudest, most quiet sound I've ever heard in my life. And I, I don't know how you would ever even mimic it. But it was it was the cadence of two feet striding very gently and slowly away and dude my, I, my butt was getting closer and closer <laughs> and closer to the ground and i was stunned it was like when i heard an earthquake for the first time you don't know what's happening it's really weird and you just freeze you know something's right. wrong and it walked away and all of a sudden like as it kind of got a little distance all of a sudden the bravado the rpg came back and i and i'm like and i thought mike yeah. You know, I'm like, I hope he heard this because, like, no one's going to believe this. And I turn around and look, and he's sprinting at me, peed his pants, zipping up. Did you fucking hear that shit? What is that shit? Wait, he heard, he heard the same one or a different he one? He heard it. No, he heard it walk off. He heard it stand up. Uh -huh. He did one of those, like, turning while peeing and, like, ah. Uh, like, imagine. So he was only, what, like, 20 yards away from you? 
Uh, maybe 30 yards. He was... this, But he could hear from down there, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because we're listening. He's, I mean, he's peeing, but he's still listening. Like, we're right. there to we're there to squatch for five minutes and leave. Right. And so, anyway, it was, he comes running up. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Why is this happening to us? I'm like, dude, it works. The techniques work. And he's like, how does it work? How, what? They need to listen to us. We need to do this on the show. Why are we doing this on the show? I'm like, because they don't care. You know, like, and they're off track. They're off track. Yeah. We got to help get them on by loving them and slowly guiding them there. Well, this is ridiculous. So we go back to camp. So you had the fear, the deep fear. Oh, we both of had encountering the... something that yeah. you didn't really think was real. Exactly. You, you you don't truly believe until these things happen to you. And that's the only way I can explain it. Because yeah. I do truly believe, but no, you don't. You, right, right. When it happens, you're like, well, gee, Willikers, I was right. right. Dude, it... Anyway, so we go back to the middle of the clearing and we literally have both of our hands on each other's shoulders and we're just bouncing and just smiling and like, we're doing it, man. We're going to like, <laughs> we're going to do this someday. Like, we're going to communicate. And right in the middle of that like super happy moment with the best view ever, another one stands up on the other side of camp and we hear it again and we literally just freeze and we didn't blink, we didn't breathe and we're just staring into each other's eyes, bright eyed, like, it was now this one that got up was smaller mm-hmm. and when it walked away it wasn't as loud hmm. and we were i was roughly this we were together we were roughly the same distance that i was from the, from yeah. the first time so so we heard two sasquatch get it and walk away now what we theorize it was okay we believe what we came upon and what they allowed us to be a part of for a second was a male and a female courting and the wow. male sat kind of near and the female a little bit away and they're doing where they were slowly getting closer together to where either they breed or mate or just become better. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But that's what we felt. And see, the biggest thing that I would say to squatchers... I'm sure, it could have just been like a family. I mean... It could have been a family. Yeah. Well, I'm just well, giving you our romantic, romantic flair well, to it. The, well, the reason was is because the view was so spectacular. It made... It, naturally, I would go... I would bring love there. You think that's like them parking the car on top of the city at the mountain? Abs- absolutely. Out? Absolutely. But they they're, they do it different. They do it like great great apes, you know? Like, they, right. they kind of sit near each other right. and tend not to notice each other, but they're close, and they're communicating on a different level. Then they have aggressive sex. Oh, my God. <laughs> wait, the- wait, wait. Don't you have a story... Uh... Don't you have a story involving something, uh, having sex in a Bigfoot? Mm. Oh. Yeah. That kind of steals the punchline, though. But, so, <laughs> so, okay. In, cut that out. In Mayaka, uh, in Mayaka, Florida, there's a place called Mayaka River State Park. And if you have not been there, please go. Take someone you love. And uh, the Spanish moss hanging from the trees as you drive through and they move slowly in a lazy breeze. You're just like... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have to say. There's also a Bigfoot video from Mayak River State Park where midday they see one uh, chasing deer, and a whole bunch of people saw it. Right. So it's like, is that the footage of the multiple big? I, I saw something in Florida where it was multiple Sasquatch herding deer, and like multiple people pulled over on the side of the road filming it. Uh, yeah, but I, it, as far as I remember, it's only one, maybe two. I, I'm pretty sure it's one in Mayaka River, uh, and it, you see it kind of hopping over and chasing, um, chasing uh-huh. deer. But anyway, so we're there, but we're not at Mayaka River. There is, there is a place and, um, I, I, it's just, if you've ever been to the old growth section of a forest, the second you enter it, you, it feels different. It's magical. It mm-hmm. is the source of life in the forest. That's where mother nature is. And we were at a place near Mayak River State Park in the general area, which was, um, a little park like that. And when we all got there, you could just tell the whole team, the whole fine and big for team, um, was just that we we're at peace, you know, like the woman that ran it lived in, you know, those old carnival wagons, the wooden ones with yeah. bow tops that just are romantic to look at. She lived in one. She had it built for her. And the country store has chickens and bunnies walking around in it. <laughs> like, you know, you have to pick up an egg and she's like, oh, you found the egg. You get to keep it. Yeah. And you're like, what? Wait, who, where is this? So we're in this beautiful place, right? So it's late night. And, uh, and one of the girls I was dating uh, we decide, I decide, okay, well, it's going to be the first night. So I want our first time together to be something special. <laughs> so we are literally in, within this park is a 6,000 year old Seminole Indian camp. Okay. So there is history here. When you want to know where the magic spots of the forest are, find out where the Indians like suburb usually or yeah. went or, or even went totally. maybe, and go there and you'll, you'll understand there's something about it. Maybe it's ley lines or mm-hmm. who knows. But, so we go to the 6,000-year-old Seminole Indian camp. Once again, like 2.30 in the morning, late at night, um, the teams are away uh, uh, doing their night investigation. And 
and uh, so we go and there's picnic tables. So, uh, so it's like a big rectangle cut out of literally swamp and raised up a little so you're not in water. Mm -hmm. Now about 30 feet to our right, roughly 30, 40 feet, is just is yeah. you're in the swamp and it's like swamp swamp snakes and gators and, and lions yeah, yeah. oh my right and uh so anyway just not a place to be trudging along in. and we don't trudge in the swamp now if one of them especially like money maker something heard something in the swamp and thought it was a squatch he would charge in but mostly we stay out of dangerous areas so we start doing it on a on a picnic table and uh as we're banging nice. away, and yeah, no, and she's awesome. She's the kind of girl that like looks back at you and you take it from behind, and she's cuffing your balls, and she gives you the lizard tongue. Ah, ah. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about the lizard tongue, but that fucking turns me on. And I give lizard tongue back. Ah, ah. And I don't know, it's just it's freaky. But we do that for a little bit, and then I'm like, I'm like, what are we doing? We're in a six thousand year old Seminole Indian camp. We okay, we got to get a little more romantic, you know? So you just take the hair, turn the head, break her state, get her to a new place. And so then I start listening. I'm like, listen to the wind. Like, listen, like, look at the moon, like, and we changed from, like, porn stars to, in my opinion, Native Americans, and we were making love, listening to what back in the day was entertainment, and so it's just a really spiritual moment, it turned out to be beautiful, <laughs> like, like, legit beautiful, like, like, wow, I'm proud of myself, like, I'm making love, and, uh, but I haven't told her that, and I don't actually, oh, God, and, um, and so as this is going on, you hear birds, you hear things moving, you become one with a night swamp. And now while this is happening, I hear something walking once again. And people will say like, well, you can't tell if it's got four legs or two legs or whatever. I'm like, dude, this thing is in the swamp in deep water, very slowly moving, trudging along. And it's walking and it's walking very slowly. And it goes and as we're as we're making love, um, it stops directly horizontal from us. Now, we finish up. I was amazing. We uh, we stop. And then the first thing I say to her is I go, I go, did you hear that thing? And before I can even say walking the swamp, she's like, yeah, I heard it. Do you think somebody was listening to us? Oh my God, we're going to get fired. And I'm like, dude, who is at this time of night? They're all, who's walking in a swamp? Like, that's scary. Yeah. Nobody right. would do that. Not even on a dare. And she goes, I don't know. I, dude, that's somebody walking in the swamp. I go, I know it is. And I go, wait, hold on. And once again, Bigfoot training, you're just always in training. You want to do something, you want to be good at something, just always be doing it. And it will, be, it, it will become habit. So luckily I was like, I was like, wait, hold on. Everybody knows about wood knocks. We are on a picnic table. A little moist now. And I take it and I knock it twice. Bam, bam. And I hit it. I remember I hit it hard enough to hurt myself a little bit, you know, because I wanted to hear. And perfectly timed in perfect response, one loud on the on whatever tree was directly across from us. Wow. I could see her face a little bit in the moonlight, and all I can tell you is her eyes got owl wide. <laughs> and and in that same moment where she is terrified and like, oh my, and has her like, something's real, something's yeah. in the woods, I'm having the, dude, Bigfoot just watched me fuck. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it was awesome. That was I'm a sorry. respect knock. That's what oh, that dude, was. it was. It was like, dude, you hit that right. You got spiritual on that ass. <laughs> And, and yeah, that just yeah. turned out to be one of the most beautiful moments of my life and also a legit, like, and once again, now, if you believe people are messing with us and walking around in swamps with night gear waiting, you know, yeah. then sure, you know, sure. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, all the facts lean heavily on the side of there is an unknown hominid in the woods of North America yeah. and on pretty much every continent. There is a version of this particular species. What is it? There's over 100 Native American names. We have scat. We have hair. We have recordings. Yep. We have... Butt imprints. Butt imprints. We have photographs. We have videos. Class A, Class B sightings. We, we have... have every consistent sightings coming in all the time to the BFRO. Yeah, they have DNA. The they have DNA. They People... Oh, well, where'd you get it? Test. Like, what? No. Yeah. And the thing <laughs> is, is nobody wants to touch it because in the scientific or academic world... It's one of those taboo subjects. So you, what you have to ask yourself is, why is it taboo? When did the scientific method lose its curiosity? Right. You know what I mean? And why? Well, Jane Goodall did say she believes in it. And so yeah. did Dr. Jeff Meldrum. Yeah. She gave me his uh, definitive field guide to uh, Bigfoot research. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah, uh, Meldrum's top dog. Yeah, he's awesome. He's big on footprints. He's big on uh, examining and looking at footprints, I think. Yeah, he has the most foot casts, I believe, and Cliff Barath and has the second most. Cliff from Finding Bigfoot. Cliff from Finding Bigfoot. I would, But I would even put Cliff... I mean, Cliff's very humble, but I mean, yeah. you, you want to talk foot cast, you go to that man. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah, and he's no joke. And uh, he takes it very serious. And um, you should actually hear him lecture. I got, I got the opportunity to 
at the Ohio Bigfoot uh, Conference, and uh, he's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. He's he's the professor. So you weren't just a crew member on Finding Bigfoot. You also starred <laughs> Mount Shasta in a uh, like what a two hour special at the beginning of season. Ten? Six, I think they're calling it, but it's really oh, should be yeah. season ten or eleven. So, How did you get on the supernatural Bigfoot hunting team? Mount Shasta. So I've got a few other friends, uh Reggie Bird from up in Washington State, like awesome squatcher, African American squatcher, and the most amazing thing about him is he's uh, you talk to Reggie, you're like, You go squatching? He's like, All the effing time, man. And he's like, Oh, awesome. He's like, yeah. When do you go? He's like, Oh, as much as I can. And I go, No, what time of day? He's like, in the day. <laughs> I'm like, they're active at night, Reggie. He's like, yeah, but it's scary there at night. <laughs> he's so awesome, dude. He is like, he's the fearless leader with fear. Um, and he, he's a good guy. And then there's uh, Greg and Dana Newkirk, who, if you don't know about Planet them. Planet Weird. Oh, yeah, Planet Weird. If you don't know about them, you should. Because they are the future of paranormal, hands down. Nobody works harder. Nobody's more charismatic and has more love and passion for the for the game. Like, great people. Love them to death. All right, I'm done sucking a dick. Um, they are, uh, we formed a team because the, here's the problem with the paranormal world. UFOers stick to UFOers, squatchers to squatchers, ghosts to ghosts. There is something inherently wrong with that. We need to combine forces because some techniques and experiments that work for UFOs might work for squatchers and squatchers maybe for ghosts. Well, the meditative thing that you were talking about. We're reaching out through meditation is actually something that's used a lot in the UFO community right now. There's well, a lot of really interesting uh, UFO videos that people supposedly summoned a UFO using an advanced meditative technique. And you could maybe think that I'm summoning them from the woods to right. come and communicate. So right there is the evidence, all the evidence you need to know that if we put our, if we combine forces, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, you, you know, like real American Hebrew, he's there to save the day. But it'll be expensive. <laughs> Um, so we, we formed a crew because one, uh, I'm mostly a squatcher, even though I have interest in all cryptozoology and paranormal, uh, activity, uh, Reggie's primarily a squatcher, but he's willing to investigate anything. That's why he's wonderful. Like he's like, well, if it hasn't been proven, let's do it. And Greg and Dana are the masters of everything. Okay. But predominantly ghosts. So we form a team of, of essentially different disciplines coming together using all of our techniques to find it. Uh -huh. We just think that's the, that, that's the fastest path to get yeah, it yeah, done. Yeah. So in, in this season, uh, Finding Bigfoot, God bless him, decided to uh, take a chance and go a little more supernatural, like test the waters yeah, yeah. With, 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 like, first of all, Greg and Dana think uh, Bigfoot's a ghost. A ghost. Straight up ghost. Straight up ghost. Straight it's, up ghost. It's a ghost. That's why you can't get a photo of him. When you do, eh, kind of sucks. Yeah. Like, you know, straight up. And uh, Reggie, he don't want to see no ghost. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so they decided to put us on TV. Uh, unfortunately, they switched after, what, five years on TV? They switched it to... Thursdays after it was always on Sundays and that completely boned the audience so that was either a tactical move because they don't want these right, new techniques getting yeah. out because they work or <laughs> right. people are they just made a lot of mistakes up in the head office and those people and by the way those people are probably all gone I'd be willing to bet my ass on it um, but anyway the show itself was awesome it was phenomenal yeah. we I mean I took Renee up to the top of a mountain and we sat and we meditated and you did one of your technique you, you tried yeah. out your technique on the show this is only I'll be honest this has only happened to me three times okay and I try to do it and it's I, I can't figure out how to do it every time but if you meditate correctly and really let yourself go all of a sudden you will see a black and you, it'll it's black and gray forest where the trees are black and the rest is kind of gray and, and what happens is when I'm trying to communicate with a squatch of the area or the squatches, all of a sudden I'm moving with one and kind of seeing through its vision. And, and then I can kind of move back from it and see the silhouette of it moving. And either, but like, I feel like I'm in the woods. Like it's mm -hmm. either my imagination is really powerful sometimes and, and, and it feels like an out-of-body experience or I'm having an out-of-body experience because right. they're tuning in with me. We both have like, think of it like Wi-Fi. Like if you line it up correctly, mm -hmm. you are you have a connection. And all of a sudden, You're boom. getting Game of Thrones on that Squatch. Dude. That, Seeing through the eyes of the animal. And it's the like way that broke back kid. Broke back? What? Broke back You don't squatch. say the cat's a broken it's back. Hurt. He's what? a bro broken back in Game of Thrones and the kid can see through animals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, oh, the one from first episode blew my mind, dude. They leave you at the end of that episode with incest. And infanticide. <laughs> and you're like, what? What? That's hardcore. Oh, dude, for America? That's oh, like, holy crap. That's shit. crazy town. Well, anyway, um, so you guys are formed an awesome team that's on the show. And so you we guys formed an awesome team. explored some crazy new methods. Yeah. Um, we went to Mount Shasta. Uh, and what the team think of you guys? What the uh, the normal team? How they, how were you received? Well, they're, we're scientists. You know, we're scientists. Uh, let's be honest. They thought we're a joke. 
But you know what? In order to innovate, you have to be called a joke by the status quo. Mm -hmm. And these are brilliant guys. The whole crew, they're all brilliant. And the thing is, is they just, they needed to see that because now they're already open to it. You know what I mean? Like Moneymaker, now he's interested in animal communicators. Like when, after I did the animal communication on the show and saying, we can talk to Squatch, like Squatches will be the easiest animal to talk to of all of them because they can actually probably really talk back. Mm -hmm. He is okay. now open to that. Cliff is reading books on Rupert Sheldrake, you know, about yeah, yeah. like, like, you know Rupert, yeah. right? He, genius, you know, like, and, okay, just not to digress quick, but there's this phenomenon where when a pet owner, a dog owner goes to leave work, the second they think to leave, just to think, the dog goes to the front door and waits. And they prove this phenomenon over and over and over and over again. What is that? That's a connection. Yeah. That is a telepathic, call it whatever you want. Call it a spiritual connection. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter, but it's a damn connection. Anyway, so we brought our different techniques that it could be a ghost um, that we need to try and communicate with it through indigenous methods of, of telepathy. Um, and then uh, and then just try not to be afraid of the woods. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Reggie does an awesome Squatch call, though. The man has got big old Legit. balls. Um, You're kind of in the community now as the RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, well, my, your way into the consciousness of the Bigfoot community. Well, the Bigfoot community is awakening to... to to the possibility that maybe the way we are approaching this is one way and it may get results, but there could be another way. So my spiritual approach, my just taking indigenous wisdom, that's all I'm doing. I'm not reinventing the wheel, but I'm taking it and what I'm adding to it is physicality. I have a bunch of experiments and I call them experiments because that's what it is. I'm a scientist. I have found something interesting that I believe is real and I'm out to prove it. Mm -hmm. And if along the way I realize that maybe I shouldn't, then I'll stop. But mm -hmm. for right now, I think... I think we've lost touch with the natural world, and as a result, we need something. We need we need a we need a big bang moment to bring us back to the natural world. And finding Sasquatch, I think, would would, would start that fire. And so I wanna I wanna help. I'm trying to help the human race. And hopefully so, what are you? What what techniques are you doing specifically that are different than the traditional methods of? Well, calls okay. and knocks and just uh, hanging out, or if you want to go Bobo's direction, partying a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they're curious. If you have, if you're intelligent, you're curious, and curious creatures want to see something they haven't seen before. Especially youth. I think the main reason we see most Sasquatches within a certain height range is because you're you're seeing young, like rambunctious, kind of rule bending males or females uh -huh. out, like kind of on holiday, like doing what they're not supposed to, or yeah, yeah, migrating totally. to new territories. Totally. And along the way, kind of getting caught up with it, like right. I would rebel if I was a Squatch. Yeah, I'd be if rebellious. I was a teenage Squatch, I'd yeah. check out the campfire. Yeah, the sexy ladies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, and think about it. all your hormones are ranging. So, like, why why are they attracted to women? Like, something you may or may not know is uh, when a woman is on the rag, she is more likely to draw their attention because they can smell it. They know she's like she's ready. You know what right, I mean? Right. Um, the cleansing has occurred. So, so <laughs> I might have said ovulating instead of the rag, just so you know. <laughs> Ovulation. <laughs> It's all the way. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. Where were, where were we at? Oh, all right. So, yeah, you're getting into, like, well, how do you, so you have an interesting theory or, or way of oh, hunting yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different that I think is interesting. And I, um, it's not just you. It's, it's like a, so a new old approach. Yeah, it's it's two or threefold. You tell me. One, as you're heading there, and this I'm mapping this out for anyone that wants to do this because I believe in open sourcing and sharing. And by hiding and coveting, uh, you are always off for your own personal glory. Like, share it. And if somebody does it better than you, praise them and join their team. Like, yeah. like just because you're in the lead right now doesn't mean somebody else is going to take over. You just got to love the give and take of life. Sure. So the first thing is reach out with your mind. Reach out and tell them you're coming and make it your mantra. Do it as many days as you can beforehand and say, this is the area I'm going to be and I would love to meet you. It would be such an honor. Like, you know, like, I, I'm here to protect. This is what I'm looking for. Anyway, then when you get there, you go out and you always leave an offering. You always leave an offering. Where does that come from? Uh, it's, it's just, we've been to all these different reservations and talked with all these Native American leaders. And when you talk to them, they say, leave an offering. It's mm -hmm. just their wisdom. It's their advice. Yeah. And uh, and so I leave an offering. And then I always take a moment um, when we're there to step off on my own because they're not going to approach you in a group. And once again, I think you have to have... Wait, a wait, back up a little. So the offering though, don't you leave something specific that's... that's... Uh, well, I mean, I've gotten um, from... Uh, my good friend Norma Jean, uh, who's a sweetheart and such a great leader and role model, um, she gave me something from Crater Lake, which was uh, sage mixed with some tobacco. And I think it might even had feathers in it, which are sacred to them. Um, not eagle feather, but other. 
Yeah. And, uh, and yes, you leave something like that. But honestly, in my opinion, it doesn't, you, you leave something that's close to your heart or special like that. So yeah. even if it's your favorite comb, like, you know, I'm not saying litter, but you know what I'm saying? But right. and also I would leave just, I would leave organic food. That's what I do for the most part. I either put the tobacco or organic food and then communicate to the woods. And what I do, blueberries, they love blueberries. Yeah. Yeah. Organic though. Make it all organic. Although some will just eat whatever, but most of the time I think they can sniff the, the evil in our food, you know? And, uh, and then reach out and pretend in your mind that you are light, like beautiful, bright light that fills the woods. So basically what you're becoming is a lighthouse. Not only are you reaching out to them, you're lighting it up spiritually, so to speak, so that they can see you easier, you know? And then just never stop doing that until it starts to happen. And when it starts to happen, you'll know. I have had more experiences. Wait, do you still mix it though with like knocks and calls and stuff like that? Or you just go out and you're just meditating in the woods? It, there's a new movement or maybe it's an old movement. Do I don't know. The best thing to ever do is show up to camp and just sit around your campfire and just listen. You don't go hunt. You don't do anything. they know. They they're, know. They're either going to come in or not. Yep. They know. They know you're there. Going out after them is really silly. They're, yeah. you're, you're, you're less than an infant trying to catch the world's greatest athlete. Right. So, but hunting and going out is fun. You know, like it's just fun to be adventurous. Um, but yeah, I, I sit there and I wait and I've had more times and I don't tell everyone these stories because it's so easily dismissed. What well, could have been anything, but more times than not, I'll hear the thing run, come across the ridge, come down and come down the hill and stop. I've heard it so many times. And then, but the problem is, is for me is that's where it ends. Oh, every time I don't smell anything. It never makes another noise. It doesn't do anything. It just stops there. Huh. So now, on top of that, okay, so that's, you're reaching out spiritually, but I also believe that being the top apex predator the world has ever known, they define themselves by physicality, so they are the world's greatest athletes, so I think feats of athleticism are something that could entice them to play, because all uh, all mammals play, that's what we do, We, we that's how we engage, that's how we learn, we play, right. and so my other approach, besides the spiritual indigenous approach, is I'm trying to play with them. So I have a series of experiments that I do that I think will engage them. One of them, um, which I, which yeah. I feel is my best, is uh, is I, you get a trash can, a metal trash can, and you cut um, you cut the bottom out or most of the bottom, and then you put it up in a tree, just like a basketball hoop, like ten feet high. And what you do is you do two pile of rocks. You uh, you have to see where the moonlight's gonna hit, so it's kind of partial clearing. And you put one group of rocks in the moonlight and you put another group of rocks in the darkness out. So, mm-hmm. so it's still able to throw, but it's in the darkness. And this mm-hmm. is my dream. I don't know if it'll work. Nobody really knows what to do with these things, you know, except for the people that live on properties who have seen them and have cohabitated with them for years. And they don't say anything to anyone because honestly, it's the most special, one of the most special things. It's more there. common than most people realize. Yes. Oh my God. Especially on the outskirts of society. They're everywhere. So you make these two piles and the goal is, is during the day you throw rocks into it. So it makes all this noise mm-hmm. and they hear it and you special, you especially do it just as it starts to get dark. So by doing that, the day guard, because a lot of people believe that Sasquatch, there's always one up during the day to look out for trouble. I mean, that makes sense. Unless they're underground or in a cave and they pull a big rock in the way, like smart. It's just smart. And so the hope is you get in your tent and you go to bed and then all of a sudden it's an alarm and you hear the the rocks banging around him because the rocks make a very specific sound. A bear will, a bear may go up and knock it and hit it. Sure. Right. It's not going to shoot a basketball. It's not going to shoot a basketball. And I think they have such amazing aim that you could possibly engage them by going, look how good I am. Oh, you want to take me on? Yeah. And 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 try to try to get that 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 you know the sports mm-hmm. machismo going because I think maybe they might have it. And the goal would be to wake up and then obviously the one in the pool of light I would shoot from or you or whoever tries it. And so wait, the th- have you tried this one before? Uh, yeah, I tried that one once and I, there was nothing nothing happened that night. So it's yeah, it's unofficial whether it works or not. Yeah. And and I refuse to give I think up. That's a great on idea. It. It's, it's interesting. My, another one is um, you pick two trees along a, along a strip that you can run, uh, hopefully near power lines, and you get a big old stick. And what I do is I make a mighty call, and I can sustain it for a good amount of time now, and then I whack the tree, and I sprint as hard as I, and it's like showing off how fast I can be to the squatches. I get to the other tree, hit it again, and roar again. And the goal is that if I did it and stayed there long enough, it's a challenge. It's right. like, come race me. Oh, you think you're fast. Yeah. 
hoping that I just get one of those teenage, you know, males or females that's like, you ain't shit. And right. it just comes out. And as I'm running, it just blows by me. And maybe it blows by me and it's gone. But yeah. once again, it's an athletic feat. Yeah. You know? So I think I like the bucket one better, but that's interesting too. Yeah. Well, the thing is, and the only advice I would give to anyone, and this is especially for, for kiddos, you know, like people coming up, the next generation of squatchers, don't let anyone make you feel foolish for what you're attempting to do to communicate with them. Okay. Don't let them let you feel, yeah. try everything because until somebody definitively goes and lives with them and comes back and says, all right, I'm Bob Fosse and this is how it is. Right. Uh, nobody knows. No one knows. So use your beautiful imagination to create things that are so interesting that their curious mind would want to engage with you and play. Yeah. Just remember, like, a gorilla was a mythical beast until, like, 100 years ago. Yeah, it was, like, 1904, I think, they finally discovered, oh, shit, these things are real. <laughs> well, we got to wrap this up in a second, but I wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to hear what you think about the dark side of Bigfoot. Ooh, I don't know if people good. out there are familiar with this awesome book series called Missing 411, written by <laughs> David Pilates, I think is his name. I mean, he's um, really It's not about too. Bigfoot. He never brings up Bigfoot. He never says Bigfoot, but the books are about missing children and people who, who could look like a child, who are smaller, disappearing in national parks or near national parks in mm -hmm. very weird circumstances. For example, a lot of these kids are found suddenly like 4,000 feet in elevation above where they were taken mm -hmm. uh, with their shoes off and confused and um, either fine or, or, or unfortunately sometimes they're dead. Sore bones. But they're taken like right around when they're, right when they're walking with their parents, like really close by. It's um it's a really bizarre and interesting thing he's uncovered, but what it begs the question is what is doing that, and of course people speculating that it's it's Bigfoot, Bigfoot oh. stealing kids. Oh. Now we know that, but we isn't it true though that Bigfoot? It's Osama bin Laden. It's bin Laden. But what we know is that Sasquatch have a interest in children. They they like they have a fascination with children. We, there's mm. lots of reports of them watching them close by from the woods mm. or standing close, but most of the time nothing ever happens. It's just like they watch them, but there is a chance that maybe. Maybe sometimes, I mean, they are wild animals. They might just be jacking kids and taking them up the, uh, halfway up the mountain and being like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. Mm. But I did it. But I, yeah. <laughs> so, what, I mean, what do you think? In the Bigfoot community, do, All right. do people talk about that? Because that's something that no, a no. lot of, like, super dork fans like myself love to discuss. They, yeah, well, you are a different breed. Like, it, what I found with true squatchers is the dark side of squatching is just not talked about as much. It's just because all the cases can't be proved. You know, it's literally, there is, you can't prove it. So right now it's just, no, they're harmful. They don't mess with humans because you mess with humans, more humans show up and guess what? Your habitat's destroyed and now they're after you. Yeah. You don't mess with humans. It's a breeding war. We won. Um, what do I think it is? I, I will go back once again to teenage squatches. I think that, okay, what is this? This is a large animal and it is a predator by nature. It is the world's premier predator. Now, if you look at any other predator in the wild, what do these predators attack? What do they go for in a herd? The kid, the sick, the old, or the kids? The youth. I think it is absolutely as simple as that. Now, the only difference is they're conscious. They like, they're curious and they're intelligent. So they know I can't, I don't need to eat this kid. I don't need to take this kid to eat him. But I think sometimes when you're a teenager, you're so emotionally supercharged, you don't make the right choices all the time. That's part of learning who you are. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes these squatches, I think they, they snap because yes, the main thing is, is like one of the most famous stories is this grandfather literally takes the kid to the bushes to pee. The, the family's standing 15 yards away. He's standing next to the kid. He just turns and looks. He happens to be peeing near a group of... Uh, is it dog berries or raspberries? It's, it's, it's the berry that they, they for some reason, love. Yeah. Pe most people vanish around. It's a red berry. And, uh, and the kid's gone. No noise, no sound, no nothing. Like ninja moves. Uh, and, and so what I think it is, is do I think, uh, do I think some Sasquatch eats some of the kids? Yep. I think they do. I think it's very rare, but I think they do because there's always that one. You know, right. there's that one kid that would kill animals growing up. There's a psychopath Sasquatch out there. Always. There has to be. It just, it runs universally across species. Um, two, I think, I think most of them never do it. They almost do it or fake it. And when they do do it and they don't eat them, 
Um, yeah, a lot of times these kids are left, they're, they're alive. They're they just, don't know what to do with them. And right. they're kind of like, well, I'm not bringing them back. And, they kinda, and they're so curious, they just let them go. Yeah. Oh, and who knows, maybe it's female squatches that lost a baby and steal it because they want a baby, but then realize, yeah. There's thing. a book called Monster by Frank Peretti that I would urge people to read that has an awesome storyline about a, a female Sasquatch that mm -hmm. loses her baby and then adopts basically a human yeah. to be her child. It's really interesting. So, all right. Non-fiction? We, we got to wrap this up, though. Um, Why? Any last this, thoughts? This okay, quick, wait, quick, this is lightning round. Ready? First thing, what do you yeah. think the best evidence of Bigfoot is? Or what's your favorite evidence? Because that's like I mean, a, Patty. Patty's the best evidence ever. So you're, you're all in on the Patterson and it, Gimli footage. And it was just the 49th anniversary, so bang, done. And you met, you met Gimli, too. You met Mr. Gimli. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. He is an old-school cowboy who, like, literally, don't let him around your daughters, your wives, or your mothers, <laughs> because he will charm them, and they will leave to be a part of his harem. <laughs> he's amazing. They'll get him pregnant. Um, <laughs> old sperm, but still oh, swims. So do you think that Bigfoot is a physical animal, or do you buy into any of the uh, extreme theories that it's a interdimensional creature or that it's a ghost i am wide open on all theories because it hasn't been proven yet but where do i lean i lean towards it's a physical creature that has interdimensional uh qualities it can do things like that if need be um but I, i'm shallowly in that world i'm literally creeping towards just solidly real yeah and then once you get solidly real which for our species unfortunately we have to see it visually um, then I can start moving into those areas. But yeah. do I think they have, like, do I think they communicate with, uh, with telepathy? Of course, because that's what I'm, that's how I'm getting close to them. So, and I suck at it. So I'm, t yeah. they are, okay. they move more in a physical direction where we like the dwarves dove into technology and dove deeper into the world. Like why it, it was, what could they be? They, they could be a gigantopithecus. They could be an evolved version of a giant ape, upright walking bipedal ape called yeah. gigantopithecus that did exist for real. I think... You, you want my theory a little it's very simple uh there's a lot of things that are kept from us in history and i think that they know about this subspecies this, this hominid and they've just wiped it out like they just gigantopithecus maybe but they just wiped it out there's another one that was right along the side of us i still think neanderthal are out there especially in Ural mountains over in russia like like there are things out there they're just on the fringe and yeah. they're hidden because nobody nobody fucks with human beings all right i think on that we'll end it Already, man. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. Is there uh, is there anywhere you want to point people to go find anything about you? Uh, you for have, about me? Yeah. Um, do you have a, don't you have a Facebook page? Yeah, Footin' with the RPG on Instagram. Uh, look up Ryan Golombeski on uh, Facebook, and then um, yeah, I'm getting my uh, I'm revamping my YouTube channel, so that'll be up soon too. And then just follow my craziness. Like I'm approaching this from a spiritual aspect. I'm using Native American wisdom. And I'm an ex-athlete, you know, so I'm bringing my athleticism to to the uh, this discipline of squatching. And so far, I'm getting good results. And join me and share your results with me because I'm. Let's share, and you get some good shit going. I'll be. I'll come help you. You know what I mean? Like I'm wide open. This is this is about. This He's is Mr. About, Social Media, so reach out. He'll get back to you. Yeah, this is about leading a life of wonder and searching for wonder. And uh, if you're doing it, I want a part of it because that's awesome. Yeah, right. boy. Yeah, boy. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, RPG. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, you're trying to rush me out of here. Yeah, well, I got to get going. How much like your face? Thanks a lot. The forces of paranormal are combining. Join the revolution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah.